In this lesson, we will learn and tackle the different CSS positioning properties and learn how to position our elements using this property CSS declarations. So let's first go create our new file here and name it CSS positioning.html. I'm hoping that you're now more familiar with how we maximize the use of our Visual Studio code here. This is the reason why I'm actually doing and repeating myself in creating new files here guys because I really want to get your hands dirty in coding and the best way to really do this guys for you to be more familiar with the things that we are doing here will always be to build projects so right now we are actually creating files here and I'm hoping that this is helping you out in getting familiarized on how to properly use the HTML elements that we have so far discussed in our sessions. Okay, now that we've changed this to the title tag to CSS positioning, the name of our document here or the title of our document here, let's go and put some sections here because I want to build two sections for this exercise and have a container, div container, uh, we can call this container parent or parent container because we'll be using this as a container here and inside of it I would want to have four divs so let's with a class name of child multiplied by four so automatically that, that will be generating four divs for us Besides from the child class name here, I would also want to go and place here a box name, class name. If you remember, we can do that. We have multiple class names. So the box here will be for general styling and the child divs or class names that we have applied here will be for a specific styling. So, so that we can go and give this specific styling let's go and make a bit of distinguishment from each of the class names here so we can do one two three four for the different positioning properties that we will be applying so let's go and have child one let's have child two child three and child four okay so inside of the head tag i would want to reference this class names so let's uh, go create uh, and use the style tag here and then reference the container and of course the other a box from where we will be specifying the general styling that we can use for every child div here child 2 now let's just go and copy paste this then change this to child 3 and child 4 okay let's format our document now we have our css selectors here then inside of the section tag here i would want to go and place an h2 section 2 and here i would want to have a inside of the parent container i want to have a h1 parent element container so let's go and check the document here at least we'll be able to verify if we were able to do it correctly let me just open our html file here so now we have the parent element container child 1 2 3 4 and section 2 Now let's go back to our code here and I just want to go and specify here, add some description inside of my class name here. I want to know that we have a block box here. So this is a block, which means this is a block and this is referring to the element. So we have the box child. So I just really prefer using the block element modifier means for naming class names here at least you will know that there's a this there's a relationship between all of these classes so you will see that the box is the block and then we have the block 
and then the element which is the child child name here that gets to be modified actually we can put two dashes here as a as a distinguishment so that we can follow the main format for block element and modifier class naming now let's just go and resize our window here so this we can easily see the changes that we're doing and inside of the box container here I'm going to give it a background color of blue save it let's see what will happen so we have a blue initial background color and then inside of the parent container I want to give it a background color of crimson let's save that let's see what will happen so we now have the parent container here and let's just say that I want the parent container to have a height of 90 VH if you remember viewport height so at least that will be occupying that much of the space of our our browser or our screen and I would want to set the font size for the parent container to 20 pixels refresh so at least it will be a lot bigger than our child than the regular h2 or h1 um, h1 styling default styling font size now let's try to give it a padding so that there will be some space inside of our parent container here let's say we give it a at least 50 pixels of padding at least it will be move it will have a bigger background um, inside of the main parent container and then let's go now to our box boxes here for the box child one I would want to apply here the dark cyan color and for the box child 2 background let's see here background color dark khaki let's go for the dark khaki where is that khaki color here so you would see that we are able to specify so we have a general styling here which is the background color blue and we are able to specify specific styling inside of our child elements here by using the box child class names and now let's go in background color 3 will be dark gray let's save that let's see what will happen here and for the box 4 I would want to have a background color of corn silk let's see okay so we now have a parent container with child 1, child 2, child 3, and child 4 now let's go and try to add some height and width inside of our box general styling here let's see what will happen so if we give it a 100 pixels width let's see what will happen so you would see it became smaller and then a height of 100 percent I'm just actually using here the different things that properties that we've already used in the previous sessions here so you will see we have a hundred percent of height and what I want to do here is to give specific stylings in our child elements so I would want this to have a 150 pixel height and a width of 150 pixels so at least we will have a small box now and we'll just need to copy that in each of our elements here and refresh so we now have this three or four child elements that that has a 
styling of box for 150 pixels for the horizont for the width and 150 pixels for the height just take note guys that the box child one two three four here was able to override the content of the styles that we've declared inside of the box class because i just wanted this to be a template from where i will be testing out certain values in creating the boxes here and as we've discussed before if you remember the order on how you declared this CSS declarations can affect the way the browser will be rendering your your styles so you have to be very careful with how you order the the the, the declarations that you're making inside of our style sheet so right now the boxes here were able to override all of the stylings that were here inside of the box class now let's go and refresh this and then i just want to go and put the h2 here inside of a div with a class name about so at least we can also apply some styling here and then save that let's see what will happen so they're still there we still haven't made any styling yet so let's go and put here about and then let's have a background color for the section 2 let's have it colored blue and give it a height of 100 vh let's see what will happen in our document here so we have section 2 there the height was not uh, rendered because we spelled it uh, incorrectly now we have 100 vh here so inside of the body element i also want to give some declarations for the parent element of all of the divs so the body element selector i would want it to be colored salmon and margin let's set it to zero and padding zero let's see what will happen here so now we have that colored salmon here for the body element but of course i still want to have some margin specifically for the parent container here just for distinguishment so let's go and do that let's add some margin here 30 pixels from the top right bottom and left at least we now have our parent container and it has a margin space uh, from the space from the main body element now i want to go and place this child div elements instead of having them vertically positioned i would want them to be horizontally positioned inside of my parent element container so what i'm going to do here here's a quick trick on how to do this without using float properties will be to go and declare a display inline block and then refresh let's see what will happen here you will now see that the div childs of the parent element container that we have here are now positioned in a horizontal position now i just want to go and add some additional styling in our section to here so let's go back to our code editor and then let's we can declare this inside of the about div or inside of the h2 element the idea here guys is that the color property will be setting the color for the font and we can go and declare this either inside of the div element which is the parent element of the h2 element or inside of the the h2 element itself so that will be producing the same result the reason for this is because of what we call inheritance so the styling that we are declaring here inside of the about div element can be inherited by its child element which is the h2 element in this case 
So if I'm going to go and save this and refresh, you would see that now our text here is white. So if I go back to my code editor and I would want to go and increase the size, font size, and make it 50 pixels, uh, a much bigger size for the heading to element font size. Now that we have built our demo site, I just want to go and proceed to our main topic here, which is CSS positioning. So when we say CSS positioning, this will be involving the position property that will be specifying the type of positioning method we can use for an element which can be static relative fixed absolute or sticky so the position property property will specify the type of positioning positioning method we can use for an element the first positioning property that we can apply here, let's go down our box child here and we can use and declare the position property by using the position property declaration here and then you would see that it will show us here some some values. So the first one that I want to talk about is the position static. So static positioning will just follow the normal flow of the document based from how we declared it inside of our HTML document. So we can see here that we have the parent container and we have div 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's following how we declared it inside of our document. So if we try to go and open our document here, you would see that uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's following the normal flow of our documents here. If you remember, when we haven't yet applied our display inline block property here, you would see that it will be in a vertical position because it has a block default property. So if we refresh this, you would see that it's following the format on how we applied or typed our code here inside of our HTML document here. So we have the parent container. Then the h1 div box child 1 div box child 2 3 and so on. Now let's go and try to check our developer tools. And if we go to our block child here and inspect our elements inside of the box model, we can see that the display property is block, and that's why it's in a vertical position right now. Display block will be occupying the whole width of the element so we'll have a separate lecture about the display property so for now just have that idea so now let's go back to our code here and put this back to display inline block and another key thing that i want to show you here guys is that the the position property for child one is static child two is static and that will be the default value for the position property of each of the elements. Even the parent element here has a static position property. Let me just refresh this. And one key note about the static position is that it will just follow the normal flow of the document based from how we declared it inside of our HTML document, as I've said before. And it will not be affected by the other position properties that we use to declare, such as top, right, bottom, left properties to move our elements. And remember that we will need to declare the position property here before we can use these other properties, the top, right, bottom, left properties. Each of these properties will be working differently depending on the position value we used. Let's say I would want to go and use the other position properties here. As we've declared here, uh, we have a position static here. And then we go and apply top, so 50 pixels, supposedly. In our document flow, this child element should be going down 50 pixels based from the top element. So if we refresh this, you would see that nothing has happened. So that totally didn't affect or did not apply any changes for our child one, which has a position static declaration. Even though we have used another property here, it totally did not get rendered based from what we gave as a value inside of this property top property this just simply means that the top right bottom left property declarations will not be affecting the elements when we use this position static property value 